Welcome to Compass Global Markets Weekly Update. I'm Tony Boyajian. There's a lot to get through, so we'll kick off by talking about the US dollar strengthening on the, over the weekend after the better than expected average uh, hourly earnings figures, which printed at a uh, positive 0.5% month on month or 2.9% on an annualised basis, and it's a lot stronger than expected. The previous two months' wages data were also revised higher, which is a positive outcome for the US market. This is now at a faster pace than the inflation target of 2% that, uh, that, the, that the Fed uh, eyes. Now, the negative jobs data has been completely ignored. The US non-farm payrolls actually fell 33,000 when the forecast was for a rise of 80,000. It's the first fall recorded in seven years. Uh, however, the market, as I said, ignored it because wages data is seen as a more of a leading indicator about the future of U.S. interest rates. Uh, now, we've seen the unemployment rate in the U.S. also fall from 4.4 to 4.2 percent, which is a 16-year low. But because it's seen as a full employment market anyway, the market tends to ignore the jobs number and focus more on the wages number. So the market is now pricing a 75 percent chance of a 25 basis point U.S. interest rate hike in the December. Uh, this time, only a fortnight ago, it was a 50% chance. Now, Hurricanes Harvey and Irma have wiped out uh, a lot of the jobs in the US market in that food and, um, and retail sector, in particular restaurants, which fell by 105,000 in the month of September after averaging growth nearly 30,000 a month uh, during the previous six months. According to uh, articles in the US press, the uh, US economy may receive a net positive after all when the rebuilding stages uh, recommence uh, uh, post the, uh, the hurricane uh, affected regions. Uh, meanwhile, the US dollar has retreated in the last 24 hours after Russia warned that North Korea is planning a new missile test uh, that is capable of reaching the US west coast. President Trump has tweeted that, uh, sorry, but only one thing will work. So this geopolitical uncertainty continues to remain alive. We've seen gold strengthen by 1% overnight. It's back up towards that 1290 US dollars an ounce on safe haven buying. Uh, now, the US Republicans um, only have a small uh, majority in both the House and the Senate. So they require near unanimous uh, uh, compromises or approvals of any bill. So we doubt that a meaningful tax reform package will be passed and that the Republicans will be able to raise enough revenue uh, to cover the costs of significantly changing the uh, uh, or cutting the corporate tax rate. So the question is, how will they be funded? Where are the details? In two weeks' time, President Trump... Uh, is due to announce who will replace Janet Yellen uh, as the Federal Reserve uh, chairperson because her term expires in February 2018. Now, Trump and Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin uh, have met with Kevin Walsh and Jerome Powell, uh, their two leading candidates and favourites, uh, to discuss their credentials to take over from Yellen. Now, apparently, President Trump has six candidates. If you read my report and listen and watch the video, uh, you'll um, you'll find that uh, the other candidates are obviously Janet Yellen is still a candidate. There's Kevin Walsh. Uh, there's Jerome Powell. John Taylor, Gary Cohn and John Allison. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays out. Meanwhile, New Zealand's ruling National Party under the Prime Ministership of Bill English has won 44% of, of the latest votes in the New Zealand election, and the opposition Labour Party has won 37% of the votes. The populist New Zealand First Party, under the guidance of Winston Peters, is expected to hold the balance of power in the next parliament after securing 7% of the votes, as the coalition government now looks to take shape um, in Parliament. So um, we've seen uh, we've seen the markets react as predicted. Uh, the New Zealand dollar has actually fallen by 5% over the past week and Aussie Kiwi exchange rate uh, went back above 111 at one stage and that's uh, strengthened by 3.5% by just in the past week alone. The Aussie dollar has fallen by 4.5% while we've seen some US dollar strength re-enter the market. The key short-term technical levels now to watch for Aussie US, 76.6 US on the downside is firm support and on the top side we expect resistance initially at 78.7 US cents. The Aussie dollar trading range over the last 12 months has been between 71.6 and 81 cents US. 
Uh, now the price of iron ore remains weak, it's fallen another 2% over the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, iron ore price is now around 61 US dollars a tonne. Uh, it has fallen around 23% uh, over the past month and the Australian dollar has only fallen about 4.5%. So perhaps there's room for, for further catch up. Uh, we've seen China's uh, cakes and PMI manufacturing data for the month of September. It came out worse than expected. It fell to 21 month lows due to weak output from manufacturing and service companies in China. The composite PMI printed lower than expected as well. This implies further downward pressure on China's economic growth in the fourth quarter. But the big uncertain event coming uh, in, uh, in the days ahead will be um, China's Communist Party's National Congress. That begins on the 18th of October. Uh, this meeting takes place twice every decade uh, and is expected to replace half of China's leadership. And this will help uh, President Xi Jinping form uh, his influence uh, into the power brokers in China over the next decade. So watch this space for further developments. Now tomorrow morning, uh, on uh, Wednesday morning, 8.15 a.m., you can follow, uh, you can follow uh, our latest uh, markets wrap. So I'll be on uh, ABC TV Breakfast at 8.15 a.m. Uh, for our latest market updates, followed by Thursday's Sky Business News Channel 602 on Foxtel and Optus at 12.15 for our latest markets wraps. Have a great week. I'm Tony Boyajian, Compass Global Markets.